All right, how's everybody doing? Fine, sir. All right, good. My name is uh, Major General Cedric Wins. I'm the Commander General of U.S. Army Research Development Command, Engineering Command. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to this segment on the Warriors Corps. Uh, I am the Commanding General of the ST organizations uh, that are largely front and center to a lot of these efforts with respect to uh, the War fighting uh, capabilities and modernization priorities that uh, Secretary of the Army and the Vice Chief Staff of the Army and the Under Secretary of the Army spoke about. Uh, so I want to welcome you to the Warriors Corner. I want to also invite you to take the opportunity uh, when I finish or sometime uh, over the next couple of days uh, to go both out to the Innovators Corner where you'll, you'll see a lot of technology that we're working on, uh, sometimes. Uh, within our decks and labs, solely in our decks and labs, but oftentimes in partnership with industry players. Um, we are very, very uh, enthused about the opportunities for collaboration with industry partners. Uh, the other uh, suggestion I'd make to you is take the opportunity to go over here and look at the uh, Army exhibit, take a look at, uh, we've got displayed various different representations of the six priority areas and the two cross-functional areas. Uh, so to give you at least a basic idea of what we're talking about, uh, we talk about the six priorities and the two cross-cutting areas of the SHU and PNT uh, and synthetic training environment. Uh, I'm going to be joined today with my, with, by my deputy, Mr. John Willison. Uh, and so we're going to kind of tag team uh, this just to discuss a little bit about what RDECOM does, how we are uh, very much uh, fused together with the cross-functional teams, talk a little bit about some of the work that we started before the cross-functional teams stood up to get after the six priorities that the chief had uh, articulated uh, that he wanted us to go after, those being future uh, vertical lift, long-range precision fires, next-generation combat vehicle, air and missile defense, uh, soldier lethality, uh, and then the two cross-cutting. So, um, if we could go to the first slide, and I'll just talk a little bit about RDECOM. RDECOM's got about uh, 16,000 scientists and engineers and technicians who do research development and engineering for the United States Army. And our purpose is to provide technology that delivers capability to the warfighter. And we do that uh, pursuing technology either in conjunction with industry or in our labs. Uh, there are seven research development engineering centers and labs. Uh, they get after a full suite of technology for the Army, uh, going uh, as far to the left as uh, vertical lift capability, air and missile defense capability. We do armaments, we do tank and automotive technology for the Army as well. Uh, and it's all about increasing the lethality for the soldiers so when they go out and fight, they can go out and fight and win and overwhelm any opponent that we have and come back safely. We do it by developing technology or collaborating on technology that empowers, unburdens, and protects the warfighter. Uh, back in uh, October, November time frame, uh, after the chief had announced what his six priorities were, uh, we got on a path at the direction of the Under Secretary of the Army to begin to realign and refocus our investments, uh, trying to strike a balance between uh, technology investments in the near term uh, the midterm and the far term, but principally focused on these six priority areas. Uh, what that amounted to is the realignment of uh, a large amount of our resources that uh, covered our 19 program, uh, roughly about $7.5 billion, of which well over 95% of it uh, is going to be aligned uh, to these six priorities and the two cross-cutting areas. Uh, and so when you think about uh, the number one priority right now, we've got about, uh, in our program, about uh, $940 million uh, focused primarily on long-range precision fires uh, to get after uh, those extended range that the, ch the Chief talks about, uh, get after those extended range where General uh, Brown described upstairs during the panel, where we want our cannon artillery to shoot farther than our missiles, and we want our missiles to shoot further. Uh, out to, to get at those strategic ranges. Uh, and so that's where our investment is going. Uh, we are looking for and working through the cross-functional teams. Embedded within each and every one of those cross-functional teams, uh, I have 
uh, engineers and scientists that are a part of that team uh, to help the cross-functional team leads understand uh, the limits of technology, the availability of te technology that is occurring either uh, within my Dexon labs or uh, out in commercial industry or with other Department of Defense partners. Uh, this chart is really intended to show you uh, how we see uh, the importance of those uh, developmental efforts. And the reason uh, we developed this chart just to point it out is because uh, no single deck or lab is responsible for the delivery of the technology uh, for long-range precision fires, for example. There's going to be a part when we think about the propulsion and energetics that's going to come from uh, either our, our armaments uh, deck or our aviation and missile research development engineering center. But then when you think about the sensors, uh, the sensors that you will have to have when you get out to those ranges beyond 499 or up to 499, uh, you're going to have to have sensors uh, that can see, fix, decide, and uh, give the information that's necessary to engage targets at those greater ranges. Uh, that's going to require some work from our uh, communications electronics uh, research and engineering center uh, that does a lot of sensor work for the Army. Uh, and so the chart is intended to show you, number one, uh, what we've done to align ourselves with the cross-functional teams. So every one of my research development centers, uh, I've assigned a lead to collaborate directly with the cross-functional teams where, for example, in next generation combat vehicle, our tank and automotive uh, research development engineering center is the principal RDEC that is responsible for the interface uh, with the next generation combat vehicle cross functional team lead, Dave Lesbrans. Uh, Dr. Uh, Paul Rogers and his team are working as the principal lead. Uh, however, with the other partners that are participating in these efforts, because uh, you've got a communications piece that has to occur with that. You have a platform piece. You also have uh, a piece of that that uh, will be ingrained with the, the firing capability, the speed of fire, the firing capability. Uh, that all has to be synchronized and integrated in order to deliver the right capability for the Army. Uh, and so uh, all the labs play um, in that effort. Uh, we've got about, uh, in the area of long-range precision fires, we've got about 930 million, as I mentioned before. Uh, about 2.1 billion across our current program uh, that is now focused on next-generation combat vehicle, uh, where our folks will partner uh, with industry partners to get after those four enabling and essential capabilities. And you'll hear uh, Premier General Lesperance as a cross-functional team lead describe. Uh, within Future Vertical Lip, uh, the network technology and soldier lethality. Uh, across our program, we've got about $1.3 billion in investment across our palm uh, that was uh, developed and submitted in, uh, in uh, 1923. Roughly about $1.2 billion was moved around where uh, we presented to Army leadership and they made some tough decisions about certain efforts that we were no, no longer going to pursue because from a technology standpoint, uh, we didn't see that it had the most direct connection to providing enabling capability uh, for uh, these priority areas. Uh, next slide. I'm going to pass it over to uh, Mr. Willis, and he's just going to give a couple of examples in two areas uh, of how we're working with the CFTs to get after the very specific capabilities. So good afternoon again, everyone. Welcome to Words Corner. I want to reinforce what uh, General Wynn said that using two examples really talk about to understand what we're doing in each of the different priority areas and for each of the different CFTs, you really have to understand three things. One is, as General Wins talked about, we've got seven Dexon labs that are enduring organizations. That's part one. Enduring organizations made up of a number of engineers and scientists. Uh, and they work in different science and technology spaces usually sometimes enduring technology areas, sometimes areas that become greater interest and lesser interest over time. Uh, but enduring organizations doing s and work, advancing technology, in order to get after specific capabilities. So that's really where it all comes together. And that's why it takes the collaboration across all of our Dexon labs, across a number of different technology areas, 
And importantly, we do 6-1 work, we do 6-2 work, and 6 two work. So that means overtime as well. So this is a very simple way to try to depict pretty complex space where we're making trades on priority, what capabilities are most needed now, and what capabilities that are needed over time. What technologies are emerging, which technologies show the most promise. And most importantly, when you look at this, in this case, using air and missile defense, because we are in Huntsville, using air and missile defense as the example, you're going to see cross-collaboration across every deck and lab into a space to give you a capability. And that's important from our perspective because that's where, from an integration capability, our e commerce value proposition really exists. The ability to integrate across a bunch of different spaces, not compete with people, and to the comment made earlier, and question made earlier to uh, um, uh, Secretary McCarthy and the Vice about us competing with industry. That is not our interest at all. And, and, and if we are doing that in a space, that's just a lack of communication. It's our interest to bring all that together, leveraging industry, leveraging academia, leveraging other services. We spent a lot of time talking to our partner services. Leveraging all that work, but integrating it into a capability that's needed either now or we believe that's needed in the future. So this gives you some sense within air and missile defense. Again, you don't have to read it. All you really got to know is there's a lot of dots on here, which means we're going after a lot of different capabilities. We've taken a lot of time and a lot of hard work to prioritize capabilities one to end to really make sure we're focusing our investments on the top and working our way down. As General Wins pointed out, some really hard choices had to be made because there's a lot of things we can do. There's a lot of interest in technology out there, but there's specific capabilities that either the CFT's looking through the window or we believe is going to be necessary longer term. If I go to the next chart real quick, use one other example, next-gen co uh, combat vehicle. In this case, one thing I want to really highlight is one of the, one of the targets for next-gen combat vehicles Dr. Rogers talks after us here on Next Gen Combat League. Uh, you'll hear him talk about these architecture areas. So it is a recognition that we are after technology, we're after capability, but we're after doing that from an engineering perspective in a deliberate and an open way. And one of our key products are architectures, whether it has to do with autonomy or um, drivetrains or protection or vehicle electronics. Our interest is how we setting things up to be evolved over time so that we've got a product that shows the integration and then we've got a product that shows the ability to leverage technology from not just ourselves but from others as well. And so with that. So let me just uh, hit on two other points that uh, I just want to make sure I make clear. So uh, one area I did not talk about but is fundamentally important to our science and technology efforts is how we conduct basic and applied research. So the 6-1 piece of this, uh, we are continuously working on the strengths of those partnerships. Uh, we know that's important so much so that we have established uh, various different uh, innovation hubs uh, with our, AR, our ARL, Army Research Lab constructs, so we have an ARL West uh, that's out in Southern California, our ARL uh, south, which is down in Texas, we recently opened up uh, ARL Central, which is up in the Valesca Center up in Chicago, uh, and that is all intended to bring in proximity uh, ideas of innovation uh, with early research, uh, foundational research to get after the design and development of technology that can advance into engineering work and then further into our capabilities that we need. So the strength of those collaborations are extremely important. Uh, and so I just wanted to kind of reiterate that. But uh, some to any questions, and I'll take any questions at this time, or Mr. Wilson will take any questions that you have. Sir? When, when technology has been, when technology has been gone through, let's say, the quality, QPL status, then that technology has to then be encouraged, or else it's just going to sit there, which is just sure. on the list. Sure. Is this where the Army lab would then share how that new technology could be applied into engineering 
Does that make sense? Yeah, so, so, don't, so it just doesn't sit there after sure. all the times they've gone through sure. this detail. So um, just like perhaps uh, folks in industry are challenged with the where the opportunities are available to get technology uh, into uh, Army systems right. or into and gain Army interests, oftentimes we have the same types of uh, challenges. Right. Uh, and so I think through those collaborative opportunities that we're talking about, we've got numerous cooperative arrangements that we uh, work, we've developed and are working uh, to help develop consortiums uh, where you can bring in various different ideas, um, gather and work together on different solutions. We are focused on Army problems, so certainly we want technology that has an applicability to an Army problem. Is this uh, what the research lab does? Help? Yes, yes. So in the research lab, through those partnerships, through those arrangements, that's the intended purpose. Um, we are mindful of this whole idea about technical data and who owns tech data rights. Uh, it doesn't do us any good when we're developing technology uh, to develop technology that we believe is, is going to be uh, game-changing or useful and not have it go into one of our platforms. So we also are mindful of the gap that you have to bridge between mature technology that gets to roughly about TRL6 uh, and how we can bridge it into uh, either existing programs or record or new programs that the Army has defined a requirement for. So, I would add quickly, you know, this is why these priority areas are important. It gives us some definition of the space that we're working in, some definition of the problem we're trying to solve, so it's not technology for technology's sake. And then the second thing I would say is exactly what Secretary McCarthy said this morning. This is why it's important to get the requirements community and the s and community close together and working. questions okay again I just want to again invite you and first of all thank you all for being here and then invite you to the opportunity to come, go out to the innovative course see some of the technology that we're working on there may be opportunities to talk to some of our engineers about ideas that you have uh, and ask some questions about how you all can uh, work to forge some partnerships with us and then the army exhibits will give you a little bit of taste of where we're going uh, with the cross-functional teams with, uh, to get after these priorities. Uh, and everything is about speed of delivery. So we're emphasizing it both internal to the Army, and we certainly want to make sure that you all uh, are prepared to get on board with that. So thanks uh, for everything you do. Uh, Army Strong.